Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to show you guys must have apps to daily drive your Linux. So let's get started. Now, these aren't apps that we are gonna be checking out like LibreOffice or whatever mail client you're using. These are apps that I actually use to daily drive my Linux desktop PC. Now, there are a bunch of things that we need alternate support for just to get it working on our Linux desktops, especially like hardware stuff. Now, in Windows itself, you can install like a Logitech program and control your mouse and you could control the hotkeys or change whatever those settings are. Now, in Linux, we can't just install the Logitech program made for Windows to have it work. Now I'm not going to be able to show you full examples over here, maybe screenshots from my desktop because I am using different hardware there, but I will show you what I'm talking about. So let's jump into the desktop. The program I'm going to be showing you today is called Piper. Piper actually allows you to communicate with the device. So if you do have a Logitech or other devices like that, you can still manage the DPI, the buttons, uh, you could program them buttons with hotkeys or switch them around. So left click would be right click or whatever you want. And as, I, as you can see from these screenshots, these are all the things that you're allowed to do with it. You can even have LED controls if your mouse has LEDs. So this is a very important application, especially if you are switching over from Windows to Linux and still being able to manage your mouse because I'm pretty sure you, most of you are probably using some, some form of mouse that is not just two buttons like this. So this is by far a must have. Now, the next thing I use, because I mainly have AMD CPUs, I use something called Core Control. And Core Control allows you to manage and change and over slash underclock your CPU, thus allowing better performance. So in my case, I didn't do anything on this desktop PC because I didn't even unlock all the options. So you could see that Core uh, control is like just standard. But if you look at this screenshot over here, you could see that you can actually control the CPU speed and the states and the frequency governor. So there's a bunch of things that you can do on this application that uh, would benefit from, especially if you're running an AMD and you want to undervolt your CPU, this is something you would look into. Or if you want to modify the fan speed. Now core control also allows you to overclock your AMD GPUs as well. So if you have an AMD GPU that you want to undervolt or whatever it is, you can also use core control to uh, perform that test. On my main desktop PC, I do have this running just so I could lower the voltage. On this PC that you're looking at right now, which is my 1700, I, I don't have it fully installed. So this is why you don't see all the options. Even though if I change this over here, nothing happens. So there are some extra steps that you need to take in order just to get everything working. But once you do, this is the screen that you get and you could actually manage everything you want. Now, being that my desktop has a 3080 and this one has a 1070, another thing I use is something called Green with Envy. Now it's just think of it as afterburner for Linux. And it looks exactly the same. You're allowed to control your fan speed, your voltage, your overclocking speed if you wanna go higher or lower on the clock. And because it's a 3080 reference card that I got, I do undervolt it and overclock it just to get the same performance and uses a lot less power. So if you have a GPU that requires either undervolting or overclocking, uh, green with Envy is what you are looking for in Linux. Now, the only downside to Green with Envy, it only works with X11. It, so it doesn't work with Wayland yet. So if you're switching the desktop over to Wayland, uh, this application will not work at all. So you do have to stay at X11 just for Green with Envy to work. Now, next we have is a personal preference, which is called the Steam Deck UI. Again, Steam Deck doesn't have a Linux application natively. So we do have to use some sort of means to get it to work. And I use my Steam Deck a lot just to, for shortcuts, basically. This is the Linux version of Steam Deck UI. Now you can't do as much things as you would on the regular Steam Deck application, like add animations or change pages and stuff like that, but it does allow you to at least still put shortcuts onto your Steam Deck. So it's better than nothing, but it's not the best. I really wish they did update this to a way where I could actually see CPU stats onto the screen like I used to have when it's in Windows, where I could see what's the utilization and everything through the Steam Deck, but it's only a very static, image hotkey button thing for you on this application. There's no other way to use it. Now, next one is another one that I have a personal preference to, which is Samba 4K. I run around with a lot of network shares and I always need to have them mounted so I could edit or watch media or do whatever it is. So I need Samba 4K. And Samba 4K acts just like a Windows network place where when you first boot up the computer, it will automatically mount the shares. Or if you accidentally disconnect it, it'll reconnect the shares. Or anything that has to do with mountable shares, 
uh, SAM 4K will take care of that. So with that being said, I do have everything lined up where it will boot up the system. It will automatically log in all the shares. So as soon as I turn on the computer, it will fix that. The only problem that I have with this right now is it doesn't do it after I get back from sleep and I don't know how to solve that. So when I wake the computer back from sleep, my network shares are disconnected and I don't know how to have this automatically reconnect after that. Even though I did set this timer, like every 60 seconds, you check to see if it's connected. If it's not reconnect, it doesn't do it. But otherwise, uh, I've been using this application. It's been great. And if I really needed to, I could just click on the SAMA 4K button and then hit auto mount, you know, and it'll mount it again just by two clicks. Now, last but not least, uh, this is one of my favorite uh, applications actually for KDE right now or for GNOME, which is called KDE Connect, which allows you to connect your phone to your desktop and get notifications. Like this is the best image I could find right now where it'll actually pop up on the bottom right with notifications for Windows, Mac, uh, Linux PCs, and it's directly connected to your phone for any messaging applications like WhatsApp, uh, Android messaging, or whatever it is. And it helps me transfer files. So when I have a lot of files on my phone that I want to directly transfer to the PC, I could just use KDE Connect and browse through my files and pull it. And again, the notifications is a big help because I don't always have my phone next to me. So having that pop up, knowing that somebody texted me or something, I'm able to respond right away. So yeah, KDE Connect is another good one. If you're on GNOME, it's called GNOME Connect and they work really well. If you, if you haven't tried it, I urge you to give it a try. And that is it. Those are my must haves for running your Linux as a daily driver, especially like the tuning options for the Nvidia and the AMD CPU. Those things are almost required at this point because they just make the CPU so fast where I don't need to use that much voltage and I could just undervolt it and get the same performance for using less energy. And those are the applications I run as soon as I boot up the computer. And honestly, if it wasn't for Piper or for Steam Deck UI, uh, I would not have made the switch. It's because those are the two applications I need the most, which is my mouse and my Steam Deck, I use it a lot. And without certain compatibilities, shifting over to Linux from Windows would be a huge annoyance if I can't use all my hardware that I have. Anyway, if you guys have any cool applications for Linux that is a must have, not, I'm not talking about like LibreOffice or whatever mail application that you're using, but stuff like this, let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.